upstairs. Oh, okay. Can't on my dad. When he got the 83. Yeah, she needs something to help you with car. Probably don't have Huh? Okay, good. I say it. Okay. Let me know, okay? I'll be the motion maker's office. Okay, Wendell, I'm live over here and I'm going, but where's that guy that changed? Yeah, I'm muted. Oh, I'm not? They're here to speak on the applicant with the applicant. Well, the applicants don't have green cards. <laughs> applicants and people who fill out green cards can come in. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 They can listen after. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Little Rock Planning Commission. Somewhat delayed meeting, but uh, with all this technology, we're trying to get everything done right. Uh, this will be an adventure for everybody involved. Gotta get really close. Real close. There you go. It'll be an adventure for everybody involved because this is the first time we've done a virtual meeting, so bear with us. With that, I'd, I'd ask the staff to call the roll. Chairman Latour. Here. Vice Chair Hamilton. Here. Commissioner Barry. Here. Commissioner Benton. Here. Commissioner Brock. Here. Commissioner Brooks. Commissioner Hart. Here. Commissioner Haynes. Here. Commissioner Ramon. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Here. And Commissioner Vogel. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. You've been provided with a copy of the minutes. A uh, motion would be in order for their approval. So moved. So moved. Second. Been moved to say and approve the amendments. All in favor? Oops, we're going to have to do a roll call on these, so on these votes. So bear, bear with us. Commissioner Barry. Okay. All, in, all in favor of the approval of the minutes? As they as they call your name, please signify your vote. Commissioner Barry? Yes. Commissioner Benton? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Vice Chair Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Chairman Latour? Yes. Commissioner Ramon? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Commissioner Vogel? Yes. With that, thank you. With that, uh, would you take us through the consent agenda, please? Following is the consent agenda for the Little Rock Planning Commission subdivision agenda of May 14, 2020. You have one item on consent withdrawal, item, num item B, file number Z4474A, Unitarian Universalist Church, Revised CUP, located at 1818 Reservoir Road. On April 2, 2020, the applicant submitted a letter to staff requesting withdrawal of this application, and staff supports that request. Next, you have items on consent deferral. Item D, file number Z9467, R Displace 2019 PRD, located at the northeast corner of the intersection of Rock Street and East 10th Street. The Historic District Commission must approve a certificate of appropriateness for this development prior to consideration by the Planning Commission. This matter would be, will be considered by the Historic District Commission no earlier than June 8th. Staff recommends deferral of this item to the next scheduled meeting as determined by staff. Item number 3, S1874, Baird Inn Estates Preliminary Plat, located north of Chenal Valley Drive, north of the Germay and Salon neighborhoods. The applicant requested this item be deferred in order for additional issues to be addressed. Staff recommends this application be deferred to the next scheduled meeting as determined by staff. Item number 11, Z5817J, Cantrell West Restaurant Center, short form PCD, located at 15100 to 15122 Cantrell Road. The applicant failed to complete notification to surrounding property owners as required. Staff recommends this application be deferred to the next scheduled meeting as determined by staff. Item number 15, Z9500, Goodwin Manor, long form PCD, located at 3708 Garrison Road. The applicant submitted a letter to staff on May 7th requesting this application be deferred. Staff recommends this application be deferred to the next scheduled meeting as determined by staff. Item 16, Z9501, Petaway Business District, short form PCD, located at 412 East 21st Street. The applicant failed to send notices to surrounding property owners. The applicant has requested deferral of this application and staff supports that request and deferral of the application to the next scheduled meeting as determined by staff. Item number 20, Z9508, Posh Automotive, short form PCD, located at 8900 Colonel Glen Road. The applicant did not provide responses to the subdivision committee comments in a timely manner. Therefore, the item must be deferred, and staff recommends approval of the deferral to the next scheduled meeting as determined by staff. Next are the items on consent approval. Item A, S6, S867F9, Chenal Valley, Phases 30 and 31, Revised Preliminary Plat, located east of Lamarche Drive. 
Staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Staff also recommends approval of the variances to allow advanced site grading, pedestrian trails in lieu of sidewalks, slopes greater than three, and three to one on the southern portion of phase 31-2, and the maximum depth of the detention ponds to exceed four feet. Item number one, <coughs> S641N, Markham Commercial Subdivision Replat Preliminary Plat, located at 11400 West Markham Street. Staff recommends approval of the proposed plat and sub subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F, and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Staff also recommends approval of the variances to allow the rear setbacks on lots 2B through 2F to be reduced to the existing building setbacks and to allow for 33 parking spaces on lot 2D. Item number two, S1873, lots A, R, B, R, R, and C of the Shoney Subdivision Preliminary Plat located west of South University Avenue between West 32nd Street and Town and Country Avenue. Staff recommends approval of the proposed plat subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the staff in the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Staff also recommends approval of the variance to allow Lot C to not have direct access to a public street. Item number four, S1875, Kirkland, Little Rock Preliminary Plat, located southwest of the intersection of Chennault Parkway and Kirk Road. Staff recommends approval of the proposed preliminary plat subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D and E of the agenda staff report. Item number five, Z1997C, Christ Lutheran Columbarium, revised CUP, located at 315 South Hughes Street. Staff recommends approval of the requested CUP subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in sections four and six of the agenda staff report. Item number eight, Z4343MM, Saddle Creek Phase Two, revised short form PCD, located northeast of the intersection of Cantrell Road and Ranch Boulevard. Staff recommends approval of the revised PCD subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F, and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Item number nine, Z4470M, Chennault Park Center, short form PCD, located at 15100 to 15198 Chennault Parkway. Staff recommends approval of the PCD subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Item 10, Z5617B, Kirkland Long Form PCD located southwest of the intersection of Chennault Parkway and Kirk Road. Staff recommends approval of the requested long form PCD subject to the following conditions. Compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff also recommends approval of the requested variance to allow smaller interior landscape islands. Public Works recommends approval of the application with the following conditions. With development of outlot one, sidewalks should be constructed along the west side of Canis of the Canis Road driveway along the lot frontage to the west side of Costco building to provide pedestrian access from Canis Road. With the development of outlots two through four, sidewalks should be constructed along the north side of the service easement. Sidewalks should be installed on the east side of the Chennault Parkway driveway with construction of the fuel center or the west side of the Chennault Parkway driveway with development of outlot four. Sidewalk connectivity should be provided from the sidewalk on outlot four to the proposed sidewalk on the south side of the Kirby Road North driveway. Future access to Canis Road and Stall Parkway is limited to the approved PCD locations. A mountable directional island should be placed within the Chennault Parkway driveway to prevent left turn movements. The Public Works staff also recommends approval of the advanced grading variants to grade the outlots with construction of the Costco. All advanced grade, graded areas should have vegetation established prior to issuance of a final certificate of occupancy. Item number 12, Z8349A, John Barrett Neighborhood Open Air Market Short Form PCD Revocation, located west of South University Avenue and south of West 32nd Street. Staff recommends approval of the PCD revocation request. Item 14, Z9496, 37th and Catherine short form PDR located southeast of the intersection of West 37th Street and Catherine Street. 
Staff recommends approval of the request to rezone the property into PDR subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. We also received a letter of support from the John Barron Neighborhood Association on this item number 14 and also uh, item number 12. Uh, we also received a letter from John Barra in support of that item. Item 18, Z9504, Bass Commercial Concrete Zoning Site Plan Review located at 6 Remington Cove. Staff recommends approval of the site plan subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the agenda staff report. Staff also recommends approval of the variance to reduce the rear setback from 100 feet to 40 feet. Staff recommends the dumpster screening requirement be waived as it will be enclosed within an opaque screen surrounding the laydown yard. Staff recommends approval of the variance for use of gravel in lieu of asphalt in the laydown yard with a six foot perimeter of gravel to pave system. Staff also recommends approval of the variance to allow the vehicle area screening as shown on the plan. Item 19, Z9505, Lot 9R and AR Capital View Edition Short Form PRD located at 321 Rice Street. Staff recommends approval of the request to zone the property to PDR subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F of the staff and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Item 21, Z9509, McLean Law Short Form PID located at 1020 East 6th Street. Staff recommends approval of the PID subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. And item 22A337, 17201 Canis Road Annexation. Staff recommends approval of the annexation. And that concludes the consent agenda. You've heard the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll ask our former, former chairman, Craig Berry, if he'd like to make a motion. I move for approval of the consent agenda as read by staff with all recommendations. Second. I'm sorry, was there a second? I yes. missed it. I'm sorry. Okay, roll call on the uh, consent agenda. Commissioner Barry? Yes. Commissioner Benton? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Vice Chair Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Chairman Latour? Yes. Commissioner Ramon? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Consent agenda is approved. Consent is approved. We'll go to our regular agenda. <clears throat> and the first item up is item C, which is... And while they're coming in, we'll ask, we'll ask you to go ahead and read the okay. uh, proposal into the record. Item C, file number Z648B. This is St. Bartholomew's Church, Parish Hall, short form POD, located at 1622 Marshall Street. The applicant is Ron Woods. The current St. Bartholomew Church building and rectory at 1622 Marshall Street was constructed in 1931. The church itself is over 100 years old, having been previously located on 8th Street and in a building near the current site. The church building and rectory occupy the southern two lots on the west side of Marshall Street between 16th and 17th Street. The four vacant lots adjacent to the north are, also, north are also owned by the church and until the 1980s had single-family homes on them. Okay, we'll ask uh, in a minute. Shuffling pages. St. Bartholomew Church is requesting approval of a planned office district to allow for construction of a parish hall and associated parking adjacent to the existing church and rectory. The proposed one-story parish life center building will be constructed in two phases. The first phase is 5,250 square feet with a future 1,200 square foot expansion. The 27 space parking lots located adjacent and behind the proposed parish hall building. The building will contain multi-purpose, fellowship space, kitchen, restrooms, and church offices. The ap applicants did submit responses to the uh, issues raised by subdivision committee. Building elevations were provided. The parking lot was modified, eliminated some of the parking spaces, and increasing the land area around two trees proposed to be preserved. No dumpster has been indicated on the plan, so if one is ever added to the site, it must be uh, behind the building and screened to comply with the uh, city code standards. 
Dumpster service hours would be limited to 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. All new site lightings be low level and directional, shielded downward and into the site. The signage uh, should comply with that allowed in office and institutional zones. No fencing is proposed. The parking area will be accessed via a single driveway onto Marshall Street and from the alley behind the property. The alley will be improved from 16th Street south to the entrances to the proposed new parking. The site is located in the Central High Design Overlay District, and there are three variances uh, from the DOD standards. Uh, the first is from the ground level facade requirement. For new construction, at least 60% of the ground floor level facing pedestrian public circulation areas shall be glass windows and or displays. The proposed building does not comply with this standard on either the north or the east facades. The nature of the building is such that it's not necessary or desirable to have 60% of the facade in glass. Uh, the material section, the materials of the exterior shell shall be brick or other mason brick, other masonry, wood, or material that resembles wood, such as vinyl siding. The proposed building will have front and side exterior finishes of brick and vertical fiber cement panels. The rear of the building is proposed to be metal panels. The standard parking requirements section, parking requirements shall be 50% of that required by Article 6. This 6,450 square foot building would typically require 64 parking spaces. Uh, in the DOD, 32 spaces are required, and the applicant is proposing 27 with this development. Approval from the city's urban foresters required prior to removal of any trees exceeding 14 inches in diameter. Two such trees are proposed for removal, and the urban forester has approved the plan. To staff's knowledge, there are no outstanding issues. Staff is supportive of the proposed POD. The church has been part of this neighborhood for over 100 years. Allowing the addition of the parish hall will help the church continue to meet the needs of the church and the neighborhood. Staff believes the building material, facade glass, and percentage facade glass percentage and parking variances are relatively minor. Allowing the proposed use is compatible with uses and development in the area. Therefore, staff recommends approval of the requested POD and variances subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F, and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Okay, now we'll go. <clears throat> the op the uh, applicant has up to 20 minutes, and the key word there hopefully is up to, to tell us why, why it's a good deal, and there are some people that are going to come in afterwards that are opposed. Uh, I have two cards. Uh, first of all, the applicant wants to just tell us about the project. That's great. We have two cards in favor and one card from an, uh, an opposition. So to the podium, please. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Ron Woods, Woods Group Architects. I'm here representing St. Bartholomew uh, Catholic Church. Uh, the last time <clears throat> we came before you all, uh, we uh, were post, uh, postponed so that we could meet with the Neighborhood Association. Um, and that was a pretty good description of what Bonnie read. So I'm not going back over the description of what we were doing. Uh, but we met with the Central High Neighborhood Association since our last uh, appearance before you all. And the only opposition um, uh, that was noted at that meeting was the parking situation. So as uh, Monty indicated, there's 34 parking spaces that would be required by the Central High Overlay District. We have 27, which is basically... Uh, doing better than the overlay district uh, requires because the overlay district wants to cut down on uh, the parking spaces. So instead of having 60-something that the city re would require, the overlay district uh, reduces that to 34. So we reduced it even five more to 27. That's the only sticking point with the Neighborhood Association they don't want us to have any, and we just we just can't do that. Um, uh, as <clears throat> was uh, indicated in the description, this church is over 100 years old. They still have a lot of seniors that, that attend this church. They need to be able to park at the facility and not have to walk a block, a block or two away. 
Thank you. We have two uh, two cards in favor. Uh, Mr. Lindsay. Yes, sir. My name is Lee Lindsay. Um, I am one of the elders of the church. As has been mentioned, this uh, church has been in the uh, uh, community for over 100 years. Um, this parish hall will be uh, very instrumental, not only to the parish, but also to the community. Uh, we have several programs that we plan to uh, operate out of the hall that uh, can help our community as far as um, addressing some of the issues that uh, that we have in the community uh, in the area um, as I as uh, was mentioned in the um, uh, the reading uh, this is a very um, um, vibrant Parish vibrant life there. Although we are some, there are a number of senior citizens such as myself. We're also growing, and so we feel that this um, our, this hall would allow us to do outreach to the community and allow us to grow and continue to be a um, integral part of the community and uh, continue to improve the, our standard of, of life in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Rocky Herman. Hello, my name is Rocky Herman, and I'm one of the younger members of the church at age 65. One of the reasons I'm here today is that one of the persons who was in opposition of what we wanted to do suggested after we met with them that our members, because they were older, could park across the street and walk because there was a parking lot there at the older school. That hurts me. Uh, I'm a Central High graduate. I'm a realtor, a real estate broker. I've been selling homes in that area for almost 40 years. I can't see a more desired need than this project and what we're attempting to do. One of the projects that we're looking at that Mr. Lindsay was referring to, we have a project called Feed the Community. And what we're trying to do there is have a series of churches across the city, across the state, across the county, where we serve food freely to people on the same day at the same time. And we're the seed church for this project. We've not been able to do that right now because we don't have the facilities. We have a parish hall that used to be the old St. Bartholomew School. It's not suitable for our needs. This project will help, able to help us to be able to serve the community, and that's all we're looking for, the opportunity to serve the community. Thank you. Thank you. There is one in card, and y'all can leave now, please, thanks. Step outside. Uh, there's one card that's in opposi opposition, Paul Dodds. Mr. Dodds? Hey, Paul, if, if you would allow everybody to stay till the end of the, the item, then, then they'll have to leave. Sorry about that, gentlemen. It's, we learn by doing. Mr. Dodds. Yes. Um, my name is Paul Dodds. I live at 2119 West 17th Street. Um, I'm here to express my support for the parish hall and my concerns about the parking. Um, uh, the the St. Bartholomew's is an important member of our community. Uh, you know, encourage the, the building of the parish hall and all of the good service work that they're doing in the hall. Uh, I've sent out a PowerPoint presentation to the planning board members. I didn't realize that, uh, that the deadlines had changed uh, and that I wasn't able to do a PowerPoint here. 
but it's, there's a great deal of parking in the neighborhood. The diocese owns 12,000 square feet of asphalt directly across the street from the St. Bartholomew's Church. They have not been willing to consider using that as parking. Instead, they want to take a vacant lot with a beautiful old oak tree uh, in the middle of the neighborhood and turn that into parking, which I believe is unnecessary. I own a house directly across the street from it, which I would like to renovate. Um, it will be much more difficult to do so if it's just looking at a parking lot. There is a huge amount of parking in the neighborhood. One of my neighbors counted that within a block of the parish hall, the proposed parish hall, there's 100 on-street parking spaces. The pictures that I sent you earlier in February and again today will show empty streets all around the, uh, all around the, the church. Um, it will also show you pictures of houses, unsafe and vacant houses, also around the church with need renovation, which will be difficult to do. And also show you pictures of a huge two, there used to be two blocks of homes um, right across the street from St. Bartholomew's, which is now parking for Arkansas Baptist College that is also empty now and empty most of the time. The representatives of the church were unwilling to consider discussing possible parking sharing with the with the college and these empty lots. And th those empty lots used to be houses. When I moved to the neighborhood 16 years ago, there was a neighborhood there. The city, by, uh, by approving parking there, has allowed the demolition of a neighborhood, and it will basically do the same thing again. I understand the needs of older residents who have limited mobility. Um, there will be 11 handicapped parking spaces behind the facility. There hasn't really been any discussion about the actual need, whether that's sufficient or not. No discussion about valet parking. Um, I just, it, it is a, it is another knock, uh, it's another tooth knocked out of the, out of the face of a neighborhood that's had a lot of teeth knocked out of it. So uh, again, strong support for the parish hall, strong support for the, for the church and its mission, and just would ask that they consider using their 12,000 feet of asphalt across the street for parking instead of taking a, uh, a residential lot and asking for the right to turn a residential lot into yet another parking lot in the heart of our neighborhood. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners, either in person or at home. Do you have any questions for either the applicant or the opponent? Hearing no questions, if, I believe if I could just ask you. one comment in the future, if you could please ask people to respect social distancing. Everyone was huddled around the the television, the one television screen here in close difference. Uh, I have not come out and done anything like this for about two months, and I did not feel safe coming here. So I'd ask that in the future, please try to encourage participants to, to respect social distancing. I've taken pictures of it. It really was dangerous. Thank you. Barry, would a motion be in order? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. I move for the approval of the application uh, with all staff recommendations. Second. Been moved and seconded. If you'd call the roll on this question, please. Uh, Commissioner Berry? Yes. Commissioner Benton? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Vice Chair Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. By, uh, Chairman Latour? Yes. Commissioner Ramon? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Commissioner Vogel? Yes. The application is approved. Thank all you gentlemen for coming. <laughs> Item six. You'd read that for us, please. Okay. Item number six, file number Z5454D, Little Rock School District, McClellan, McClellan K through 8 School Conditional Use Permit located at 9417 Geyer Springs Road. The owner of the property is Little Rock School District, and Chris East. Uh, and Cromwell Architects and Engineers is the applicant. The John L. McClellan High School campus currently occupies the R2 zone site located at 9417 Geyer Springs Road. The Little Rock School District is requesting approval of a conditional use permit 
to allow the site to be redeveloped for a kindergarten through eighth grade school campus. The redevelopment will consist of one three-story school building where the former high school building is currently located. Paved parking will be located on the east and west sides of the proposed building. Stacking spaces and drop-off pickup spaces will be located on all sides of the building. Two driveways from Guy Springs Road will serve as access to the school campus. The school redevelopment will be located north of the existing, of the existing drainage way, which runs east-west through the property. The existing football field portion of the school campus will remain. The new school facility will include kindergarten through middle school classrooms. Uh, the classroom numbers noted in the agenda report are not correct, and the applicant will have those uh, here today. There will be approximately 100 staff personnel for the school campus. Parking proposed and existing will be provided on the site and will meet ordinance requirements based on the number of classrooms and employees. There will be one ground-mounted sign placed on the property along the Guy Springs Road frontage. The ground sign will be a monument-type sign with a height of five feet and an area of approximately 40 feet. There will be wall signage on the west building facade facing Guy Springs Road. The wall signage will have an area of 387 square feet. The proposed signs will conform with ordinance standards. The proposed new school building will have an overall height of 49 feet. This building height will conform with Section 36156A1A of the City's Zoning Ordinance. This section allows maximum building height of 75 feet for public or semi-public buildings, hospitals, or schools when increased building setbacks are provided, which is the case with the proposed school buildings. Increased setbacks are proposed along all property lines, which does allow the 49-foot building height. The applicant is requesting one variance with the proposed development. The applicant is requesting a variance from the buffer provisions of Section 36.522.B2, which requires a minimal land use buffer width of 45 feet along the north property line. There is a land use buffer width of 17 feet 8 inches along the majority of the north property line. The buffer drops to approximately 4 feet along the entry drive at the entry drive at the northwest corner of the property. The buffer width is over 45 feet at the northeast corner of the property. The existing school site has a land use buffer width of approximately 15 feet along the majority of the north property line. Staff is supportive of the requested conditional use permit to allow redevelopment of the existing McClellan High School campus to a new kindergarten through eighth grade school facility. Staff views the request as reasonable. The ex existing school campus has been part of this overall neighborhood for over 50 years. The proposed development will be a quality redevelopment of the existing school campus, and staff believes the new school campus will continue to be compatible with the neighborhood and should have no adverse impact on the area. Staff recommends approval of the requested CUP, including the variance for a reduced land use buffer subject to the following conditions. Compliance with the conditions as found in paragraphs 4, 5, and 6 of the agenda staff report. Any site lighting must be low level, shielded, and directed away from adjacent properties. And any dumpster areas located on the site must be screened as per ordinance standards and serviced only during daylight hours. Okay, I have uh, one card in favor and one card opposed. In favor, would Dr. Michael Poor, if you take the podium, please. Good evening, and thank you for the time. And I'll make this very brief and, and really just wanted to make sure that we were here tonight to answer any questions uh, regarding this matter. We have been working on uh, what we call our blueprint for the Little Rock School District uh, since I arrived, which now is four years. And uh, this has always been a component, and it, it really puts an emphasis on trying to move us out of Cloverdale into a better facility that we know we need to do something about Cloverdale. And so going moving Cloverdale and then several elementaries consolidating into a brand new campus for kids in the southwest. We think it'll make a difference not only for those kids but actually for the community. Uh, we've got a great partnership with our architect and, and our, our contractor. We, we don't have any money yet, but we are, we are, we've got a, a, the right, right plan in place once we get that, those funds and we ask for your support tonight and are here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, Troy Lehe has another point of view. <coughs> well, 
welcome. The podium is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the Rock Planning Commissioner and staff. My name is Troy Leahy, and I am a resident of Southwest Little Rock. Excuse me. I'm opposed to this McClellan school project. And the question has come up, what about sex offenders? There's an apartment complex north of there, apartment complex south of there, and both of them have some sex offenders in them. And has the district made any arrangements to get those people, sex offenders, out of those apartment complexes? And, you know, with young children coming in, five, six, seven years old, how would you like for some young mother to come up to you someday, crying tears in her eyes, and say, if you had not approved this, with those sex offenders by it, my baby would still be alive today. Mr. Chair, could we be germane to comments from the uh, the podium for the application, please? What? Troy, we've looked into the, the, the city attorney's office is looking into that situation, but that is not a part of this application. Uh, the, 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 there are state laws on the books regarding sex offenders, and if they reside there and they own or occupy prior to the school being there, then they're allowed to stay. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. That's good advice. I'll take it if I want to. Understood. <laughs> okay, but if... Some young mother comes up to you someday with tears in her eyes and says, if my baby would still be alive if y'all hadn't approved that. And, Sean, I want to get that in there. I request, requestfully request this item be delayed until we have time for public meetings. The school board can come out and meet with the neighborhood people and explain all these stuff, and the, and the attorneys can fulfill that deal, and all that kind of stuff. Now, get down to my part that I know a little bit more about. Myself and some other citizens noticed in the ride up that kindergarten was allotted six classrooms, elementary had 71 classrooms, and middle school had 15. We were concerned about the number going from 71 elementary down to 15 middle school. One or two things are going to have to be, one, they're going to be awful crowded in middle school from 71 down to 15, or two, a lot of students are going to be transferred to another school. Wow. On the site plan. Oh, well, let me back up a little bit. I'm sorry. Telephone conference yesterday with Superintendent Poor and the staff of the Little Rock School District. They indicated that they did not know about the classrooms being given. That's in the uh, write-up. They did not know that. They didn't know where they came from. The site plan does not show a right of way for Guy Springs Road. Center line width, type of pavement, curb and gutter, and sidewalk. For Guy Springs, it does not show the name of streets intersecting the Guy Springs. It shows a new four lane street intersecting the Guy Springs and along the north of the property. The building at 9104 Guy Springs Road is on lots 15, 16, 17 of Southgate subdivision owned by Little Rock School District. The property lines are not shown on the site plan. I should be, 
I suggest that the school district consult a security fence around their property to prevent non-students from entering the campus. A gate for children can be constructed on McClellan Road and a gate with a knock box on it for the fire department at the same location. The survey indicates that part of this area is in the 100-year flood zone. I could not find the base flood elevation on the plans. I suggested to Superintendent Poor yesterday that they consider raising the floor of the building at least a foot just to be on the safe side. In the event of a flood of the magnitude of the 1978 flood, the south drive to and from this property will be underwater. Now, that means that you cannot go in and out the south driveway during this flood time. People are going to be wanting to go to the school to pick up their children. And some of the children are going to want to walk home because they live nearby. From the experience of the 1978 flood, I would recommend that the school keep those children inside the building. And I would still respectfully request that y'all delay this project until they can get some of these items squared away and cleared up on the site plan and also on the sexual offenders. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leahy. Dr. Ford, do you care to address your, your option? You can address it or not. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, um, we did get to meet with this gentleman uh, yesterday in a phone conference and, and did talk to him and tried to uh, address some of his concerns. I uh, appreciate the comment about uh, sexual offenders. Obviously, we, we are concerned about the safety of all of our students and, and when and if this building and if it gets built, uh, we will work um, you know, with the city and the community to make sure we have a safe environment. The other thing is uh, he suggested having community means, and I want you all to know that we've been very intentional about community means. Uh, community means that took place initially uh, in 2016 and 17, which led to the closure of uh, five campuses, but it also outlaid this plan to re renovate uh, McClellan High. And then we had the big blueprint plans that occurred in the last academic school year of 1819 that then created the plan to move forward with a new McClellan and a K-8 uh, and, and having that be our number one thing in terms of new construction. We have worked with the, uh, we can answer questions if need be on, you know, uh, how we're looking at drainage um, and the perimeter of the property as well as entrance and access if need be. Thank you. Commissioners, questions? Yes, sir. Uh, as I noted uh, during the presentation, the number of classrooms that was given to us was incorrect, and I believe the applicant has the correct number of classrooms. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, well, I guess to first address the number of classrooms, that number was misinterpreted from the application. That is the number of parking spaces required for the classrooms. So we require 71 class parking spaces for each of the classrooms, as well as an additional 71 for all the teachers and employees. So that number is based on what the requirements are for our CUP application, uh, not the actual number of classrooms. However, I will give you those correct numbers. So he's correct, we have six kindergarten classrooms. We have 34 uh, first through fifth grade classrooms, and then we have 44 sixth through eighth grade classrooms it's for a total of 84 new classrooms. I'll be happy to address any of the other comments if you'd like. Um, Monty, do you have that presentation by any chance? That's probably going in the weeds. I'll stay out of there. Just to reinforce what uh, 
Dr. Poor said, Superintendent Poor, uh, we have had multiple community meetings, and I do have some of the comments as well as presentations oh, we gave during that time. Could I use this? Could I touch this to sort of go through that? Well, I'll keep going. But there are uh, some, there is documentation in this presentation about some of the presentations that we made to the community. In terms of the site plan boundary that is included on the application, in terms of the base flood elevation, that he is correct, that is not indicated on the site plan, that would be included on our grading plan, uh, in which case we do indicate where the 100 year flood is, uh, where the uh, flood plain and the uh, floodway elevations are, and he is correct about the southern edge. So that is one of the reasons why we brought in a lot of the traffic at the northern edge. Uh, in terms of the perimeter fence, we do have a perimeter fence. It is lockable, and it uh, does have a Knox box on it at that northeast corner, excuse me, northwest corner for uh, fire, fire uh, what am I trying to say? Firefighter access. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any other questions. I hope that covered everything. I have one question. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? One question. Uh, I remember the 1978 flood like it was yesterday. It was pretty devastating. A lot of kids got uh, killed during that flood. My question is, is how does the site plan address that? I heard you talk about the, I think I'm right, and in the southern part, the, new, the northern part, not the southern part. Does the fixture, the school itself, is there any danger to the physical structure? No, sir. No, okay. sir. So what he's talking about is the existing building has two different levels. There's the south edge, which is five foot four different from the northern edge of the building. So what's existing is that gym and the practice gym and then the academic side to the north. So what we're doing is raising the south side, that five foot four, further out of the uh, floodplain. Uh, the, so hopefully that. Okay. Thank you. We'll cover that edge. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? If not, a motion would be in order. Mr. Chair, I move for the proof of application uh, with all staff recommendations and comments just given. Uh, there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. If you call the roll, please, sir. Commissioner Barry? Yes. Commissioner Benton? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Vice Chair Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Uh, Chairman Latour? Yes. Commissioner Ramon? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Application is approved. Thank you all. Thank you, gentlemen. Item number seven. I have one card in opposition to item seven. Item seven, file number Z2246C. The residences at Petaway, short form POD, located at 2020 Vance Street. Ron Woods is the applicant. An application to rezone this site from C3 General Commercial to O3 General Office and O3 General Office to PCD to redevelop the property to a mixed use development was submitted and withdrawn in 2013. A PDR was approved by the Board of Directors in 2016 to allow for the reuse of the existing building as elderly housing. Uh, this development was never completed. The proposed project consists of the renovation of the existing eight-story structure to a high-rise multifamily residential building, the addition of a five-story residential annex, and the renovation of, a, of an existing pre-engineered building to an urgent care medical office. The eight-story high-rise would house 81 one-bedroom units, and the proposed five-story annex would have 15 two-bedroom units. A total of 110 parking spaces, six of which are accessible or on the site. Additional parking, additional property is under the same ownership across Vance Street to the northeast in front of the high rise. The owners are amenable to providing additional parking at that location. A revised site plan and responses were, and responses were provided by the applicant after subdivision committee. 
The project is not it, the project is not proposed as an age restricted development, but is a multifamily development to be completed in a single phase. The clinic building is an, is anticipated to be subdivided into an out parcel. Additional proposal uses would be a laundromat, general professional office, or maintenance shop associated with the multifamily development. An exercise room and resident lounge are proposed as amenities. The new five-story residential annex is proposed to have a height of 64 feet and a combined area of 18,930 square feet. It is intended to be for for one or two on. It is intended for there to be one or two on-site office staff personnel. A dumpster for the residential buildings is provided in the rear of the existing structure. It will be screened as required by the zoning ordinance. A dumpster and medical waste area is to be added to the northwest corner of the proposed urgent care facility. It will be screened as per ordinance requirements also. A 20-foot radial dedication of right-of-way will be provided at the intersection of Vance and 21st Streets. Also, the right-of-way dedicated also, the right-of-way dedicated and improvements made to East 21st Street will be made to East 21st Street in front of the property. Driveways will be evaluated and reconstructed as needed to provide an ADA-compliant pathway from the right-of-way or sidewalk to the main building entrance. The applicant is requesting to reduce the number of parking spaces from 130 to 130 from the required 150 under the zoning ordinance. Each apartment unit is required to have one and a half parking spaces, yielding 144 parking spaces, and the urgent care facility is proposed to have six, based upon six uh, spaces per doctor. An additional parking area containing 22 spaces has been added to the east across Vance Street. This lot may be reduced in number based on the landscaping requirements. The applicant suggests that the reduced number of parking spaces will be sufficient as 81 of the dwelling units are one bedroom and are likely to only have one vehicle. Staff supports the reduction of all street parking spaces to be provided to 130 to, provide, to be provided in combination of the existing parking area and the new parking area to be constructed in compliance with all standards and comments. Public Works has indicated that the applicant will need to work with District 4 of the Arkansas Transportation Department to obtain permits for improvements within, state high, within the State Highway right-of-way, such as Service Road and street and the street located to the south of the parking lot. Also, the existing street to the south of the parking lot is one-way westbound. Therefore, vehicles from Vance Street cannot access the parking lot. Signage stripe and striping must be provided to prevent left, left-turn movements of vehicles exiting the parking lot. <coughs> Sidewalks with appropriate handicap ramps are required to be constructed adjacent to Vance Street in accordance with Section 31175 of the Little Rock Code and the Master Street Plan. ADA-compliant pedestrian access should be provided from the parking lot to the entrance of the property. Landscape comments on the revised plan state that the new parking lot must be must designate 8% of the vehicle use area for green space, and this green space must be evenly distributed throughout the parking area. The minimum size for an interior landscaped area is 150 square feet for developments of 150 or fewer parking spaces. Interior islands must be a minimum of 7.5 feet in width. Trees shall be, shall be included in the interior landscaped areas at a rate of 1 for every 12 parking spaces. Perimeter landscape strips are required along any side of a vehicle use area that abuts adjoining property or the right-of-way of any street. This, street shall be, this strip shall be 9 feet. This property being located in the mature area allows a 25% reduction in the perimeter requirements. The minimum perimeter with adjacent, uh, to adjacent property lines is 6 feet 9 inches. The perimeter is deficient. Uh, portions along the north and east are deficient, and a, a variance from the City Beautiful Commission may be required uh, as a follow-up to this uh, uh, application. Staff is supportive of the redevelopment of the property for multifamily residential use and the urgent care clinic as proposed. Staff recommends approval of the request to rezone the property to POD subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Okay. Would the uh, applicant care to address us? Afternoon again, Ron Woods, uh, and I'm here with uh, the owner, uh, AJ, Mr. A.J. Gilbert, um, and he has a three-year rendering. I, I hope you all, I, I sent that um, to uh, Alex, hopefully it kind of got around to you all. But, 
Uh, but if you if you hadn't been able to see it, he has a 3D rendering of the pro what the project looks like. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, beneficial project, not only to the neighborhood, but to the city of Little Rock. This building has sat vacant for years, and it is very visible from um, from I-30. Uh, so right now, it's, it's basically uh, an eyesore uh, on I-30, but uh, the plans that we have will will make it um, give it uh, some high, not curb appeal but highway appeal, and it would definitely be a benefit uh, to the neighborhood. Um, again, it's it's a um, residential uh, facility with 81 one bedroom units and 15 uh, two bedroom two bedroom units. <coughs> Any uh, questions as far as any other uses uh, uh, Mr. Gilbert uh, can, can address, but I'll be here to, uh, I can address any uh, questions that, other questions that you all may have on the architecture. Hold that thing up so we can see it. And a little, little, a little additional history. Um, I'm really excited about this project, number one, is because uh, I was a kid when this was done. This was the old uh, red carpet inn uh, that was developed by a group of, of minority developers back, I think this was the 70s, where well, I was a kid, but my father was part of this. So it really, it, it, it really kind of uh, grown on me quickly. Thank you. Thank you. We have one person in opposition, Mr. Jewell. Good evening. My name is Cason Jewell. I reside at 1813 Pulaski Street. I am also here to represent the Jewell family and the Jewell group. I have three other siblings, and we have property that is directly across the street in close proximity of the Red Carpet Inn, whom my daddy built. It was not a minority group. He spearheaded this by himself, and Attorney Mercer was his legal counsel. Okay? Let me make this... I have up to 20 minutes, that's, that's correct? Okay. I am opposed to this project because some years back, well, not too long ago, a few years back or so, uh, the Jewel Group made an effort to try and acquire the building, to make a long story short, for $200,000. Okay. But something funny happened where it went up it was put on the auction block where developers could uh, try and get it. So it kind of slipped away from us because we had other exciting ideas for this project or initiative other than, if I'm understanding this right, other than this being another project housing initiative, okay? Uh, I have yet to see what this PDR is, code to a POD, okay? Also, let me point out, there are enough vacant properties, vacant lots or houses scattered all around that could be developed for individual family homes, okay? We believe in individual family homes, not an entire neighborhood from Central all the way over to the airport quietly trying to be acquired by a smaller and smaller number of people. In the past two months or so, I have received letters of interest who are probably acting as a front, I don't know, want to buy a family home. 
a property that's across the street from the hotel, as well as a family vacant lot that's just a half a block down the street from the hotel as well. Okay? Well, the, the scheme behind that is to quietly buy the property around something to quiet opposition. Okay? Now, I know there's some questioning in regards to the parking area, but let me give you a little bit of history real quick. Given the number of hotel rooms that the hotel had at the time when it was constructed, the picture that they have shown you where they want to build the other, build that second smaller building for uh, uh, five stories, there used to be two other homes there. Daddy had to buy that additional property so that each hotel room had one, at least one parking space. Okay? Uh, I don't want to get into all some of the other uh, details regarding that, but that had to be done. Okay? Now, of course, you can imagine during the early 70s, coming off the moment of the civil rights movement, you know, things were still kind of warm, but cooling off, okay? So a lot of that was involved, okay? I don't see this as a good fit, okay? I don't think this is a good fit. Like I mentioned before, we had other ideas that would be more spontaneous and exciting. Mixed use, you see. Let me make this real quick. My sister, she's an Olympian. She won graduate of Central High, went to Howard uh, of 78 on a track scholarship and Taekwondo, which is a form of martial arts. She was an NCAA division champion three years straight. Her sophomore, junior, and senior year. Went to the 88 Olympics, won a bronze medal, just missed making it to the gold medal round by a technical error. Okay. Then her man, he was also at the Olympics. He meddled in the men's wrestling. Okay? My oldest brother, he's not here, uh, passed, came up in baseball. We all came up in baseball. We all ran track as well as other sports. Okay? My brother, who's a uh, licensed pharmacist, okay? He was a dynamite pitcher. He had major league talent, okay? And myself, I came up as a, as a baseball player and track and field. For those of you who may uh, remember the days in the 80s of Eric Mitchell and Bubba Barrow, <coughs> the three of us were each other's main rivals in one of the most exciting events that has always been in high school track in this state, and that's the high hurdles, okay? So we bring a resume ourselves of what we want to try and do that would be more business oriented, okay? We don't need this neighborhood to be more and more rental property and apartment complex. If you want a productive neighborhood, you need a neighborhood that have individual family homes. And we believe in that. How much time I have left? Okay, uh, I'll try and shorten up a little bit. Now, I 
I don't know what else. I mean, I know they have their own interests and in what they're trying to do, and that's fine, and they have that's their right. Okay. Uh, are they just, are y'all the architectural group, or you, or is it, or is he the actual owner? Yeah, the you, the okay. Okay. Well, I, I was hope, hoping I could just lay things out for you to reconsider uh, what's all going here, okay? This whole neighborhood needs help, but it needs individual help, not collective help. Look at what's happening right now across the country. Huh? Okay. All right. I'll wrap this up. Look what's going on right now. The government is trying to is trying to provide individual help for individual families, not just corporations. Okay. So I know my uh, others wanted to be here, but they couldn't due to other prior arrangements. So uh, I think I may go ahead and just end here. I, I may have said enough. Right, thank you. I'm finished. Is that it? I think that may be it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. The applicant has the opportunity to respond, should they care to. Quite sure what to respond to. Uh, he didn't seem to have objections, any specific objections. But um, as far as the use that we're providing, um, uh, we, we've. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, as far as the use we we're providing, there's uh, the owner has done a market study which uh, um, indicate, overwhelmingly indicates that the, that the need is there in that community for this type of, this type of use. Did you all have any questions, specific questions um, that, that we need to respond to? Uh, that We'll find out. Commissioners? Mr. Chair, I do, I do have a question of staff and maybe public works. It occurred to me the I-30 corridor work with the highway transportation is coming through. I mean, is, is this going to be in the, in the right of way of all that? I mean, how, how is that going to be affected, your project, with the I-30 corridor work? That's for me. If you want to answer it or, or anyone else. No, it shouldn't be affected at all. I'm pretty sure we would have been um, informed if we were in the right of way of what they were doing. City. Yeah. You want to hear from uh, Mr. Hood? Do you know any knowledge of that? I'm afraid I'm not certain exactly about this property. I have looked at the plans in general and studied them and had some discussions with the RDOT. And generally, they're staying within their existing right-of-way. It's a drastic reconstruction of frontage roads, widening, changing walls, bridge configuration. But for the most part, it's staying in the right-of-way. And they are just now in the preliminary steps of talking to people about purchasing right-of-way. And the city has gone ahead and donated some of our city street right-of-ways to them already to get that going. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> If not, a motion would be in order. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of this application uh, as written in uh, staff recommendations. There's a second. Second. Moved and seconded. If you call the roll, please. Chairman Barry? Yes. 
I mean, sorry, Commissioner Barry. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Betton. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Vice Chair Hamilton. Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Haynes. Yes. Chairman Latour. Yes. Commissioner Ramon. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. And Commissioner Vogel. Yes. The application is approved. Item, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Hmm. Item 13. <laughs> Item 13, file number Z9183A. This is the park site at Wildwood Revised Long Form PDR, located south of Denny Road and east of the Wildwood Place, east of Wildwood Place Circle. Uh, Thomas Engineering is the applicant for this item. The Wildwood Trails Long Form PDR was established on March 7, 2017, with the approval of Ordinance Number 21370 by the Board of Directors. The proposal was for 71 residential lots containing both attached and detached single family homes. Generally, the western third of the property was not shown on the, was, was not shown on the site plan as future development and not subdivided. However, this portion was approved for advanced site grading. The developer now seeks to subdivide the remainder of the property to continue the build out of the site under the same standards, same development standards. This development is a continuation of phase one of Park Site at Wildwood, and the applicant seeks to, to develop it in the same manner as phase one. As such, the following standards are proposed 15 foot front building setbacks, block three, zero lot lines for the attached quadruplexes and triplexes in block three. 20-foot front platted setbacks, blocks two and four, 50-foot lot widths on block two, five-foot size setbacks, blocks two and four, and 32 lot widths for block three. The applicant did su submit a revised plat after subdivision committee. The fire access road will be provided connecting the cul-de-sac and at the termination of Rosemary Way and Saffron Circle. Additional right-of-way for Denny Roads to be dedicated and street improvements would be constructed as per the master street plan. Public Works has reviewed the preliminary drainage and grading plans and has found them acceptable. This is the completion of the neighborhood along the pattern set in phase one. Saffron Circle would be finished to form a street encircling the attached single-family homes in block three. These homes would have 15-foot Setbacks from the street and vehicular access would be through the access easement in the rear. The plan indicates no right-of-way access from Saffron Circle to these lots. The number of new attached single-family homes proposed is 12. The attached single-family residences are to be built on the exterior lots surrounding Saffron Circle, shown as Block 2. These lots are to have minimum widths of 50 feet. Variances are requested to provide front setbacks of 20 feet and side setbacks of 5 feet. On the southern portion of the site, Rosemary Way is to be extended to the west and then to the north, culminating in a cul-de-sac. Lots on Rosemary Way, denoted as Block 4, are to be a minimum of 60 feet wide, standard in the R2 district. The same variances to reduce front setbacks to 20 feet and side setbacks to 5 feet are requested within Block 2. Other development standards from the phase one approval are also brought forward into this phase. Access, accessory structures and fences are permitted as per the R2 district, and the maximum building height is also as per the R2 district. This development is to be constructed in a single phase. Staff continues to be supportive of this proposed, this proposed development, and it appears that all technical issues have been addressed. Staff recommends approval of the revised PDR subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F, and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. Applicant can, has the option of going first and <coughs> speak on behalf, or you can let the opposition speak and answer the your choice. Good evening. I'm Thomas Pownell with Thomas Engineering. Uh, we'd like to just uh, let the opposition go ahead, and then we'll try to address any of their comments afterwards. Mr. 
Brooks. My name is Ted Brooks. We live uh, uh, in Wildwood Place Circle, just uh, adjacent to the uh, new development. And we have concerned about the uh, buffer between us and the new uh, subdevelopment. Uh, we have not been able to get any information on what uh, the buffer would be, and that's uh, that concerns us. Chairman, uh, as far as the buffer against the Wildwood Place Circle, we are uh, platting all the way to the, our property line. So any kind of buffer would be the, no the normal 25-foot rear setback and any kind of fence each individual lot would construct. There is a buffer already platted on the on development of Wildwood Circle, and we're not, we're not imp uh, imposing on that. Any other questions from the commissioners? Any other questions, commissioners? Not a motion would be in order, please, sir. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of the application as written and all staff recommendations, please. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. If you call the roll. Commissioner Barry? Yes. Commissioner Benton? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Vice Chair Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Chairman Latour? Yes. Commissioner Rabon? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Commissioner Vogel? Yes. The application is approved. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, gentlemen. Bonnie, this agenda says 17 would be Would be next. That's correct. All right. Yes. Somebody like to speak on it? Uh, there's one person I believe that's remote to speak. Do you want to just allow them to speak? Or you may give a full presentation, or there they are. Oh, the, the, these are the applicants. Okay. So I'll go ahead and give a presentation. What is it? Obviously, somebody wanted to speak on her, they wouldn't have been told at all. The, 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 the person is here remotely through WebEx. Oh, forgive me. Uh, yeah. I, I okay. forgot. Okay. So okay. I'll, I'll go uh, ahead. Why don't we let the WebEx person speak and uh, we'll go from there. Mr. Chair, why don't we let the staff do the presentation on it, uh, yeah. what? on this item? The staff's going to do a presentation. Okay. Yeah. Read okay. away. Item number 17, file number Z9503. This is the cottages at the Manor short form PDR located to southwest of the intersection of Canis Road and LaBelle Drive. Craft and Toll would be the applicants on this application. So this 4.05 acre parcel is located on the south side of Canis Road, west of LaBelle Drive, and is undeveloped. The property is zoned R2. A planned development residential is proposed to allow for the development of 10 duplexes on a cul-de-sac street. Again, this application is for 4.05 acres, zoned R2. The proposed development would include 10 duplex residential structures of approximately 2,900 square feet each and a total of 20, for a total of 20 dwelling units. Each unit would be approximately 1,450 square feet in area. The homes will be one story and will have a single car garage. Development of the site will require undertaking a substantial cut and fill operation. Modular block retaining walls reaching as high as 20 feet will be constructed to retain the cut and fill. The development would take access from a single driveway on LaBelle Drive. This entrance would be gated with a decorative metal fence, a decorative metal gate of six feet in height. The private street measuring approximately 700 feet in length would have sidewalks on both sides. An on-site surface detention pond would provide stormwater detention. The applicant did submit revisions and additional responses after the subdivision committee meeting. 
it was determined that the right of way for the extension of LaBelle Drive abutting this parcel was split from this tract without subdivision approval at some time in the past. It appears that the property is under ownership. The property is under the ownership of the remainder of the land, a preliminary platted as the remainder of Canis Village subdivision. At the time this property is final platted, the extension of LaBelle Drive will be dedicated and constructed or eliminated through vision of that subdivision plat. No additional right-of-way is required to be dedicated for Canis Road, with the exception of a 20-foot radial dedication at the intersection with LaBelle Drive. Half-street improvements to Canis Road will be completed, with it, and a six-foot side sidewalk will be constructed along the length of the property of Budding Canis. Preliminary grading and stormwater detention plans have been reviewed by Public Works and found acceptable. The entrance off LaBelle has been modified to provide a turnaround for vehicles prior to the prior to the gate and removing the driveway island from the right-of-way and pedestrian crosswalk. A uh, variance has been requested to allow the height of the retaining walls to exceed 15 feet. The grading plan indicates a maximum height of 17 feet, and staff is supportive of that request. The required certification of site distance for the entrance drive has been provided. The location of the driveway has been optimized to maximize site distance from both the intersection of Canis Road and LaBelle Drive and the roundabout. Uh, to the south of the subject property. The re recommendation would be to establish a, a post 20 mile per hour speed limit for this section of LaBelle. The proposed development would consist of, again, 10 duplexes, 20 units total. Front setback would be 20 feet. Buildings have a minimum separation of 15 feet. Units are proposed to be single story. The subdivision entrance sign has been proposed with a height of six feet and area of 32 square feet, which conforms with ordinance requirements. Staff is supportive of the proposed development and believes it's an appropriate use of the property. And staff recommends approval of the PDR subject to compliance with the comments and conditions outlined in paragraphs D, E, and F, and the staff analysis in the agenda staff report. And staff did receive a letter of support from the John Barron Neighborhood Association. Okay, the, there was somebody on the WebEx that wanted to speak. We're having a connection problem. Go on. Chair, we lost uh, the person on WebEx. I've called her and tried to send an email to get her back on, but at this moment uh, there's no opposition on the WebEx for this, nobody for this okay. item. Hold on a second. Did we move forward or ask their forgiveness and go one more item? Well, Mr. Chair, I have a couple of questions uh, about the application. They're just, they're just minor. I was, uh, and this, the, uh, uh, this is difficult terrain. The retaining wall is going to be about 20 feet high. Is that correct? Uh, that, uh, the initial presentation called for 20 feet, but after subdivision committee, uh, the revised comments of 17 feet would be 17 feet. What's the engineering for a retaining wall that that high? I'll have to defer to Public Works on that one. Okay. Uh, commissioners, if I may speak. Yeah. Sure. My name is Travis Tolley. I'm with Craft and Tull. And uh, you're correct. We, you know, since we didn't meet in April, we've had time to kind of go back in that plan and revise that. And so we're actually looking at around 13 feet on those okay. retaining wall heights. Yeah. We've been able to revise that and tighten that up a little bit and so refine that. And so actually the variance is, is not required at this at this time. Oh, that's what I asked. Um, and, and this might not be the applicant. Of the, you mentioned LaBelle it was not properly platted as a street and, and I was omitted. So run me through that again. And, and what's, what is going to happen to LaBelle as it, as it appears on the plat? Uh, let me refer to the... Um Area zoning map. Yeah, yeah she's on. Uh, if, if, oh. if you'll notice, LaBelle, as you get to the roundabout, mm -hmm. it, there's a little stub out to the southwest. Yes. And that, that property, which would be a con the property where there would be a continuation of this street, is not owned by these property owners. So the future construction of that street would be with the subdivision of that property to the south. Mm -hmm. Or it would be eliminated. It, it could be either constructed or eliminated with that subdivision. All right. So, so we do so we know which what's going to happen. It will be constructed or not. 
At this point, we don't. We won't know until uh, see the large undeveloped tract to the south gotcha. right there gotcha. until, that, until that property develops. All right. Thank you. Okay, we were successful, and Mrs. Harris, I believe, is on WebEx. Residents 55 and older. That's correct. Okay. Senior independent okay. living. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're excited about the new development there, and we look forward to, to, um, to speaking with you further for anything else. Thank you. Uh, chairman, uh, she uh, spoke, just asked a question about uh, what was the age, uh, you know, 55 and older is what they're looking for. They're excited about that, and so the, she got her question answered. Very good. Are there any questions by the commissioners for the applicant? Hmm. Hearing none, a motion would be in order. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I move for approval of the application as written with staff recommendations. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded if you call the roll. Commissioner Barry? Yes. Commissioner Benton? Yes. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Vice Chair Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Chairman Latour? Yes. Commissioner Ramon? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Application is approved. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Item 23. Mr. Chair, item 23 will be presented by Public Works. Will be what? Uh, Public Works. <coughs> item 23, file number LA0087, Baseline Road and I-430 Advanced Grading Variants. The project is located on the south side of Baseline Road, west of I-430. The applicant is Glenn National Carriers, represented by Pat McGettrick. The applicant is requesting a variance from the land alteration regulations to advance grade by clearing and filling approximately 7.45 acres of a large 51-acre property. On the south side of Baseline Road, the west of Interstate 430, at 11501 Baseline Road. The variance would allow staff to issue a grading permit for advanced grading activities without imminent construction or further development in the property at this time. Field materials proposed to be hauled to the site from a nearby construction project. The field area will slope to natural grade at side slopes no steeper than three to one. And the proposal is to clear and fill only the portions of the property identified on the plan that are located within the 100-year floodplain and determined not to be within the floodway or within a jurisdictional wetland. This 51-acre property is currently undeveloped and tree-covered and is accessed from an existing driveway on Baseline Road. The property is very flat, minimal slopes. To the west is Fush Creek. The Fush Creek floodway is located along the western property line. Nearly the entire site is within a 100-year floodplain and the majority of the property has been determined to be jurisdictional wetlands. It's currently zoned R2. East of the subject property is Interstate 430. East of 430 is the Big Rock Fun Park, zoned I2, and an undeveloped wooded property, zoned PCD. 
South of the subject property is the Gateway Town Center. North part of the subdivision adjacent to the subject property is the Harley David Motorcycle Dealership and an undeveloped lot. In addition, south of the subject property is property zoned open space, which was donated to the Game and Fish for a future nature trail. West of this property is the Fush Creek Floodway. In addition to the undeveloped tree covered floodplain zoned R2, property zoned R2 is also located on the west side of the subject property. North of the subject property is Baseline Road. Um, the applicant has agreed that grading will occur expeditiously and the site will be stabilized within one year of the issuance of a grading permit. The applicant has provided an erosion control plan showing silt flange and appropriate erosion control measures. The grading plan shows the 7.45 acres to be filled approximately 12 feet in elevation with three to one side slopes. Uh, buffers will be maintained on all sides of the property. Between 175 and 95 feet wide, undisturbed all along Baseline Road, 335 and 105 feet, varying from 335 to 105 feet, will be maintained along the west property line. The limits of the clearing to the east is over 400 feet from the southern limits, being more than 800 feet. Orange fencing will be stalled to delineate these areas that are to remain undisturbed. Staff recommends approval of this advanced grading variance request subject to compliance with the comments and conditions as outlined in paragraph D of the agenda staff report. Thank you, sir. Would the applicant care to speak first or hear the opponent? Very good. John Hugler. Come on up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is John Hugler. I live at 9906 Baseline Road. Uh, this whole area is a severe floodplain. Baseline Road gets underwater every time we have a heavy, heavy rain. Interstate 30 gets underwater. All this is happening because people keep encroaching on that floodplain. You start taking out acreage of that collection basin, and next thing you know, it's going to flood even deeper and even more over baseline. If you build something in there, it'll have to be severely high, and then it will be isolated when it floods, and it will flood. Thank you. Have a good I'm Pat McGedrick from McGedrick Engineering. Uh, we have looked at this site, and we do recognize that Baseline Road, I've been here almost 35 years, and it's flooded off and on for 35 years out there. Uh, we don't feel like this filling this area will contribute to the flooding to any great extent. It may slightly increase, it may not. Uh, we do plan on following all the um, recommendations from Public Works concerning the uh, buffer areas uh, around the whole site. We did a study, had uh, FTN do a study to determine the wetlands area, and uh, we're staying out of all the wetlands, uh, not encroaching at all into them. Uh, we've um, had one access point for the entrance to this site, and it's going to be an existing access point that's there right now and has been. We do not plan to take any other entrance other than the, the point that's there right now, the drive that's existing. Um, although the area is zoned R2 on the land use plan, it is commercial. Um, at the present time, we don't have any exact uh, idea of what we're going to put in there, but we're trying to get it up, get it looking good. Um, we will grass it um, and maintain the grassing on it after construction is taking place. Um, I'll be glad to answer any other questions that you all may have. 
um, concerning the project. Commissioners, you got any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Motion would be in order. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of this application as written with all staff recommendations. There a second. Second. Moved and seconded. If you call the roll, please. Commissioner Barry. Yes. Commissioner Benton. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Vice Chair Hamilton. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Haynes. Yes. Chairman Latour. Yes. Commissioner Ramon. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. And Commissioner Vogel. The application is approved. Well, that's our regular agenda. Is any any comments from anyone? From yeah. Mr. Chair, I just want to thank the city staff. There's a lot of work goes on behind. This is our first semi-virtual meeting. Uh, to make it happen, I know it, it took a lot of work, and I'm sure Robinson Auditorium Security will better address the, the social distancing issues out in the lobby that was uh, mentioned. And where else can you get a venue of the river with all the cottonwood uh, fluff floating up and around so close to the location of Cregan's pub, but so far away from it opening up? Thanks. Amen. The, uh, I'd like to thank the commissioners and, and, and also the staff and those of you watching uh, for putting up with us, making our watching our mistakes in this first go around. But uh, we're glad to do it. Anything else to come before the commission? If not, we're adjourned. <laughs>